Hi, my name is Andy Greider, and this is another episode of Unique This Week, a production of Uniqueness is Power. Uh, this is a show where you're going to get to hear from an amazing guest who has found out a way to emerge from what is essentially a pretty red ocean in the podcasting world with a niche offering, uh, leveraging his background in marketing and in networking and in communications um, and a whole series of other areas. Um, ben Albert is our, our guest today. Ben, thank you so much for being here. Andy, I'm honored you're having me. Um, we're going to talk about some unique stuff, and hopefully this is unique this week enough for the audience, but I'm I'm just humbled for the opportunity. All right, on, man. Appreciate it. It's uh, it's always a lot of fun to get with good people. And, you know, from the, from the first time we got a chance to articulate and talk together and figure things out, um, I've been impressed with what I've heard, but I, I really love what you're doing now. Um, you know, when you and I met, it was under Balpert Marketing, it was under a couple other uh, pieces in the networking world. Um, but you've kind of taken that into this real business connection side of things and, and sort of opened up uh, a whole new uh, myriad of opportunity for you <laughs> and for and for your clients and for folks that might be interested. But it's in the podcasting space. So let's talk about how did you get involved there? Let's start there. Yeah, I started podcasting in 2016, quite simply because I loved music and I wanted to get into places for free. So in 2016, I started a uh, local to my hometown, Rochester, New York, music-based podcast called Rochester Groovecast. Rochester, New York, Groovecast podcast. I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing and it's terrible. Still exists if someone wants to check it out. But I started that in 2016. And I learned a ton about just the value of conversation, um, the value of putting your chips on the little guy. I was talking to a lot of local musicians and just like local undiscovered bands. And we can go as deep into the story as you want or don't want to. But when COVID hit, I was furloughed and I couldn't find a job. I didn't really think I was going to be an entrepreneur. There's no Elon Musk on my wall. But I started Balber Marketing just because my back against was was against the wall and I had a skill for marketing that through the podcast and through my sales executive marketing role, I, I understood marketing. So I started kind of like an LLC consultancy, so proprietorship and went back to my roots, the value of conversation, the value of connection, the value of putting the chips on the little guy. I started another Rochester-based podcast instead of Rochester Groovecast, reinvented myself, called it Rochester Business Connections, two of my loves, you know, personal growth, business, and music. So started a business show. A lot has happened since then. Nowadays, it's no longer just Rochester-based. It's called Real Business Connections. And what was once just kind of like a side gig for fun is now my full-time business, which is super cool. So let's talk about, uh, I mean, what both Rochester Business Connections and now Real Business Connections actually do. When you say putting the chips on the little guy, um, and define what you mean by that, if you could. Yeah, honestly, when day one, I was I was putting them on myself. I was the little guy, and I was just betting on myself. I knew that I had started an LLC. I didn't even know I didn't need to start an LLC to be a freelancer. I just thought that was my first business move. Um, and I had no traditional business knowledge. Um, didn't go to school for business, did poorly in school. I was a marketing guy playing a role in my firm. So I had a lot to learn. So I asked myself this question, how do I get the knowledge from brilliant people? How do I get that to myself? Nowadays, it's my goal to get the knowledge from the people that have it to the people who need it. Day one, I was that person. And I started Rochester Business Connections because simply put, I'm from Rochester, New York. I'm starting a Rochester business. And every man, woman, or even child across the camera from me is going to know 900 and 9,900,000. That's a high number. I don't even know. A lot of things I don't know, Andy. A lot of things I don't know. And my MBA, my business start was during COVID, having those conversations with business professionals um, and there was no goal to monetize the podcast or pitch someone. It was me just in a position of learning, loving to, again, put the chips on them, promote them and advocate for them, build strong relationships in my community, 
um, that ended up building a little bit of cloud in the community and expanded to something far larger than just Rochester, New York. That's that's awesome. And so you started out as a little guy. You've progressed to kind of conduiting between the experts and the little guy in some ways mm -hmm. and, and a few other pieces. But under Real Business Connections, what is the current goal and how does podcasting tie into Real Business Connections um, so the listeners can understand a little bit better what you're doing on behalf of uh, the little guy and the other the other folks as well. And and I'm still the little guy. I like to joke that like you're Michael Jordan, I'm Scottie Pippen. Like you're the Steve Jobs. I am the highlighter. I like to highlight businesses. That's what I do as a, a marketer. It's not about me. It's about them. It's about the thought leader. It's about the business. Um, it's easy if I walk through kind of the transition, it'll make sense. So sold marketing services, not going to bore you with a list of all the options, but everything from web design to logo design to SEO and everything across the board. Now, the podcast was a networking tool. It was a content tool. It was a thought leadership tool. It was a way to learn. It was a way to build brand. Um, but I was selling these marketing services. And I was getting, I mean, no issue there, but I was getting tons of questions specifically about podcasting. And I, I hadn't had that aha moment that like, I've been podcasting since 2016. I've been doing recording technology and editing since high school. I have a music background, so I understand the technical things. I'm obsessed with personal development. I just love people. So I like the auditory, actually the conversation end of things. So I'd get a lot of questions and people would ask me to speak about how I started my business and how to start a podcast, this or that. So I just gave away a ton of lectures and time for free. And then eventually you have this come to Jesus aha moment that I'm selling A. A is the SEO, the web design, but everyone wants to ask me about B. And clearly, um, it's a space that a lot of people can monopolize on because I did it. Like I started during COVID, replaced my income in just over a year. And it's not to brag or impress anyone. It's impressed upon the point that podcasting is what allowed me to get there. Right. There's intangibles, networking skills, sales skills, actually being good at what I do. But podcasting allowed me to bridge the gap. So... I start realizing I sell A, but I do B for myself. Why don't I just do B for other people? So that's what we do today. We help um, two ends of things. We help business leaders expand their reach and their personal brand by starting a podcast, become thought leaders in their space. And then we uh, basically take super busy people that don't have time to have their own podcast and we play concierge to book them on shows I've done it both on both ends. I've done it for clients and it's really taking a good thing. I'm rambling, but this is all it is. Taking a good thing and injecting steroids into it to make it better. Right. Your business stinks. If you don't have good thoughts, if you aren't a mover and shaker yet, podcasting might not work for you. But if you're the next best secret, you can start a podcast or guest on podcasts and boom, popularity will come to you. And that's kind of badass as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, and, and the reach of podcasts and the fact that more and more people, as you said, A, are asking about it, but they're asking about it because of the prevalence of it. And the, uh, you know, I mean, the, the, back when I first started podcasting, it was 2003. And um, wow. trust me when I tell you, it was a much more wide open space. Um, in fact, to the point where people said, oh, you mean you have a radio show? So, you know, I think there's still a lot of that misconception of exactly what it is. It's why a lot of people ask the question. So when somebody comes to you, you mentioned that you're doing really two main things, which is helping them build out their podcast and, and organize that and run that. Um, it's also getting them guest slots on other podcasts that are already out there. Um, are you ever booking guests for the people that you have in the first category? Is that also a service you offer? Not at this time, um, but I can offer it. Realistically, anyone who has a show that for whatever reason can't find guests, just go to podmatch.com and you'll get pitched 50 times in a day. There's a lot of guests out there. Um, a lot of what I do is concierge and kind of being an executive assistant 
uh, again, like the, the, the Wozniak to the jobs where I can book people on shows. Um, but I also could very easily help just teach someone how to do it themselves. Currently not doing it for any clients, but really is easy. If anyone wants to just chat for 10 minutes, I can show them a few tools to, to get good guests on their podcast. And that's tremendously kind of you to offer that up. I, I will say that I think most people that I've had as guests or when I've gone to find guests, my biggest personal problem was always the time mm. that it took. Uh, now, Podmatch was not in existence back in that day. Um, but, right. um, you know, even even that still takes time. And if you said you mentioned earlier, a lot of people that are just too busy to do uh, a whole podcast themselves. The other option that a lot of them forget about is the idea of getting booked and and being a guest and being a subject matter expert. So um, your experience, you know, of the last six, seven years of, of podcasting and of running things out and of building this out. The other part you brought up, Ben, uh, that I, I think is really key is you mentioned the sort of networking skills and using this as a tool to become a subject matter expert. So let's talk about that. If somebody is out there, they are, as you called them, the next best secret or the best next best kept secret. Mm -hmm. um, what steps do they need to take to get their spotlight shining on them properly? Yeah. So I call it the can system, lots of C's, um, but the three main C's are create, connect, content, and networking. I've been saying collaborate a lot. So let's do create, connect, content, collaboration, and networking. I know when I started my business and I hadn't scaled yet, like I felt like I was doing everything on my own. I don't know if anyone else feels that way sometimes in their role. If we can connect and collaborate, while we network, it just makes everything better. It makes easy, life easier to scale. You get to build strong relationships. I know Andy's all about this, and that's why I love you, man. You're you're literally the chief dot connector. You're the pro at it. Um, the key word, though, it's not just connect and network. It's content. So we could go on this all day from a marketing background. It's everything from, hey, Andy, can I have your favorite quote? I'll turn it into an infographic. We can both share it on our social media and tag each other, share audiences and do something fun together. Right. The podcast, hey, do you want to come on my show? I'd love to highlight you as an influential business professional in Rochester um, and we can do something cool together. So when I go into networking conversations, when I go to anything business development, I do know what my needs are. I do know what my target market is. I do know what my sweet spot is, my skill set, industries I work well with. Um, but I detach from, hey, let's find the hand the business card to the perfect person based on this checklist of items. Right. I go on thinking, who can I connect, collaborate, and create with while we network? So when I go into a conversation and Andy says something that kind of sparks joy and excites me, I'm like, hey, let's work on this together. I have this charity event that I'm working on. Come do this for me. Or when I got started, I did a lot of free um, support for charities and events just to get my name out there. But the key here is why do it alone? surround yourself with incredible people, bring value into their lives. Social media does add a little bit of clout and notoriety if you guys are publicizing what you're doing. Um, and you can build a personal brand that if you were to start a new company like Andy, kind of work on lots of projects, switch companies, no matter what you do, that personal brand and that affinity that you built by create collaborating content and networking, it's going to stick with you the rest of your life. So I'm really passionate about it. Yeah. And and first of all, that shows that it's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, it, there are a lot of people that do what they do. And then there's a lot of, there's a fewer amount of people that do what they do. They do it well, and they love doing it. And to the point of one of the reasons I'm thrilled to have you as a guest is you're checking all three boxes and that doesn't happen that often. Um, to your, your point about content and collaboration. Uh, it is the lifeblood of the putting the chips on the small guy. Um, the small guy has to do the collaboration. Uh, they have to do those other things to thrive as much as they can. They can get by if they don't do it. 
I certainly have seen plenty of businesses eke it out and, you know, scramble to get there. But there's so much co-joined effort that you can make, both social media-wise and in-person events, like you mentioned, nonprofit pieces, all sorts of other things that are uh, side projects that you can work on together, passion projects you can work on together, um, ways in which you can scratch each other's back. And uh, one of the things I'd like to impress upon our listeners, viewers, however that pans out, um, is that Ben is a uh, a fount of knowledge and a uh, wide open uh, space of, of ideas when it comes to how to do those things. It's one of the things that I admire about you tremendously as well, is that you are uh, tremendously giving about what you offer as well, as far as ideas and thoughts and times, but you're also tremendously good at it. Um, and I've learned a lot in speaking with you on a marketing level. I've learned a lot in speaking with you otherwise. So let's let's come around and ask, what are one or two of the biggest tips? I mean, I know you've just given the, the big C's and the N, as it were, um, but out of all of the things you've seen people do, what are the things you think resonate most in, in trying to help position to get ready to push a podcast out? What, what pieces help the most? Specifically for a podcast? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, specifically for a host. Yes. I would oh, say let's, let's start, let's start with the host and we'll move to a guest and we'll go. No. Yeah. I, I like, I was trying to kind of narrow down and kind of focus on the specifics of the question. Um, it goes back to what I said with create, collaborate content and networking. The reason you do that is the relationships you get to build. You could have three listeners yourself, the guest and the guest's mom better, you know, a colleague of the guest or maybe an employer, someone that close in their life. Um, but you can have three listeners and you guys still get to spend time together and learn with each other and from each other. And, and that's really the point. That's why it's creating content and networking. So the real tip is focus on the person in front of you, focus on the task at hand. Be present and bring value to them because, um, I don't know, Andy's introduced me to multiple great people. You don't know when one person's going to be the bridge that fills so many gaps in your life. You never know when that person's right in front of you. So even if your only listener is your mom, their mom, some colleague, bring as much value, be as present as possible. And this is beyond just a podcast. This is just in life. Um, because why not? Why waste the time by thinking about the next best thing? And if you show up as your best every single time, odds are that stuff's going to grow on its own. And even if it doesn't, you get the relationships. It's yeah. like a, it, it, the, the worst case scenario is you build a relationship. The best case scenario, you do some Joe Rogan thing and make, you know, 500 million a year or whatever he makes. <laughs> but you're going to end up somewhere in between. Yeah, well, and, and most likely, absolutely. And, and what that actually is great advice on both sides to the podcast host and to the guest is bring value. Um, bring value, network, build relationships. It's essentially how you and I both have built our businesses. Um, it's how you and I both see life. And, and I think the underlying thing is, at least as far as um, a lot of the types of people that we're going to enjoy working with, is finding other people that are like you that want to do that. Um, it should never be a forced hand. No. So that's a, the only other thing I'll throw in on top of all of it is if you're networking and it feels forced, walk away because it won't ever get better. Um, if the other person's not wanting to build the relationship and not wanting to move things forward, then it's probably not going to work. Um, or if you find you just have very disparate values, it's probably not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Terry Levine, who I uh, mentioned and we've talked about before, um, you know, she and I always used to discuss the Pareto principle as it applies to marketing. And I said, it's actually the Pareto principle squared for us. It's 5% of all the people you connect with, not 20%. It's 5% of the people that you need as your audience. Because if you find your tribe, they will support you and they will stick with you through thick and thin, um, even a pandemic. Right, Ben? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I, the yeah. one, the, I want to add one nuanced thing because yeah. I, I like to add on the layer. So, yeah. As a host, 
make your guest look as good as possible. It'll make them feel good. It'll basically, you can be in their, their cheerleader, endorse them to your people. As a guest, and we did this quickly, I didn't go in the whole long spiel because I already know you, but as a guest, ask questions to the host, understand what they're looking for out of the interview, who their audience is, and bring value to that third person listening, bring value to the audience. It's not about me. It's about who Andy and I get to affect and possibly help someone or change their life. It's really not about us. It's about them. So be mindful enough to ask those kind of questions so you know who we're bringing value to. So when we connect with the tribe, we can actually connect with them and not talk over people's heads. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, Ben, speaking of talking to people, if someone wants to speak with you about what you're doing with Real Business Connections or any other of the incredible amount of things that you can touch, although this I know is the focus, um, or take you up on your kind offer of, of helping them learn how to do things um, or build relationships, how do they reach out to you? What's the best way to do that? The easiest way, because it's it's there's no weird spelling like Bauer Marketing. The easiest way is real business connections anywhere you're consuming this. So if you're watching it, if you're listening to it, or if you just want to pop open a tab on Google and type in real business connections, you'll find the podcast, you'll find links to social. Um, I'm very active on LinkedIn, but I hang out on each place. So Google, search, whatever you need to do, real business connections, um, and then connect with me on whatever platform's most comfortable for you. Fantastic. Well, I, uh, I can't begin to tell you how much we really appreciate you taking the time today out of your uh, pack schedule and uh, looking forward to hearing more great things as this progresses um, and uh, looking forward to talking to you on a, on a variety of levels as we progress all through this. So um, thank you again very much for for taking the time. Um, this has been a episode of Unique This Week. And uh, once again, we've had another amazing guest in Ben Albert, who has just done uh, a, a lot of service to our, our listeners in letting them understand why it's so important to have not just great content, not just great communication, not just great outreach, but also great networking and relationship building putting it all together and showing you how to not just be the little guy out there pounding your head against the wall by yourself. You're actually forming tribe. You're forming like-mind uh, hive synergy type of ideas. And those are all tremendously important for a lot of the folks that could very well be listening in, watching this. By the way, thanks, mom, for watching. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, a, and a shout out to uh, to uh, Ben's, uh, Ben's comment also that I thought was absolutely astute was it doesn't matter how many people are actually seeing it because it's always going to end up being a value to someone somewhere. And even if that's just my mom feeling good because I got to do something cool, um, I'm, I'm okay with that. But I, I hope we have a few more people than just mom watching, but, uh, but we'll see what happens. But again, um, Ben, thank you so much for being here. Um, this is a production of uh, Uniqueness is Power. My name is Andy Grider. We'll be around again uh, very soon with some more powerful guests going through 2023 here. The show is starting to be a bit more consistent and we're starting to have a lot more fun. So um, it's uh, I think you're going to find a lot of value uh, and thanks for supporting us. Feel free to pass this on to other folks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Here's now. Uh, hang on. Uniqueness is power. I like that. Thank you.